lovely slow Saturday and mine is indeed going to be extremely slow. We are in uh, Cape Town for two weeks. We've been here now for a week and um, we are winding down more and more and moving slower and slower as it should be when you're taking a break. Coming down here yeah, was quite hectic. When I spoke to you last week, we were at the Ochrabis Falls in the Northern Cape. Now on the way there, during the first leg of our journey down, we hit a pothole between two very small towns in the northwest province of South Africa. It was between Kulini and Sanishof. Now, um, the roads in South Africa in certain provinces are really in a bad condition and the northwest is the most notorious one of them all. The infrastructure hasn't been maintained the way it should be, so this wasn't actually a pothole, um, it was a ditch right across the road and we went through that ditch with all four wheels. Luckily, um, we are driving a BMW, a very old one, but still, and she has run on flat tires. If it wasn't for that tire, we would have rolled the car because the, the right front tire actually burst from the impact. So we were able to take a, snor a snail's crawl to the closest little town. They didn't have the right tire for us because it's farming community there. So they eventually found a second hand one on a scrap heap that at least was the right size and they fitted that for us. So we could go and um, go on towards Ochrabis, which is where I broadcasted last week. So the next day, we left Akrabis and we started driving down on the western um, coast of South Africa and uh, small towns, if I tell you small towns, I mean small towns. We were 18 kilometers before Garis and the BMW started throwing her ass out and we stopped. And we saw that the left rear tire has now just come off. It's starting to come off. It was damaged in the ditch and we didn't realize it. So there we were stuck. We couldn't drive any further than that. That tire was in such a state that it would have been very dangerous for us to drive. And um, we had to call our insurance and get a tow truck and whatever. So we sat on the side of the road in the Northern Cape for three and a half hours waiting for a low bed to come and load the car and it was hot. You know sometimes things happen that are really not nice but if you look back you think there's so much that we could be grateful for. If that had happened in South Africa has nine provinces of that nine the Northern Cape and the Western Cape is fine for something like that to happen. If that had happened in any one of the other seven provinces, we would have been mugged, we could have been kidnapped, we could have been killed. It was quite eventful, shall I say it like that, yeah, quite eventful. We were actually stuck between two little towns quite far apart from each other, so we couldn't walk anywhere, there was nowhere to walk to. In the whole three and a half hours that we sat there, we didn't see one pedestrian anywhere which is strange for a South African rural area. Normally you see people walking on the side of the road and you see goats of a nearby community wandering around. None of that. None of that. Um, at, at one stage I had a serious pee. Yeah, I had to just squat next to the car and have a pee. In South Africa we call it, we, I had a plasi. <laughs> There was no other there, there was no other option. So eventually the low bed came and he loaded up uh, the car on the back and the two of us sat with the driver in the front and my word. That thing is um, governed on 80 kilometers an hour so he can't go any faster than that. And believe you me, he goes, he goes the full 80 kilometers an hour regardless of whether the road is straight, windy, tar or gravel. Because at one stage he said, oh, it doesn't look as if I will have enough diesel to get to Lutzville. So we're going to take a shortcut. Off he goes onto, <laughs> onto a gravel road in between the farms. And he went as fast on that gravel road as on the tar road. <laughs> we got to um, 
the closest proper town where we could actually find a guest house to sleep in. Um, half past seven that evening. And the guest house that we were in didn't provide uh, dinners. So you had to either go to town to a restaurant or you had to order a takeaway delivery. Of which there were only two options. The one was a pizza and the one was a burger. Now me eating a pescatarian most of the time, well actually I'm vegetarian most of the time, I will have fish on the other occasion. We decided on pizza because then at least I can have a pizza that won't mess with my, my digestive system so badly. I can't have meat after that big operation in 2020, it just doesn't work. We waited 90 minutes for the pizza delivery in a small little town. And when it came to us, it was a total and utter mess. <laughs> the boxes had been squished. The pizzas had been moving. When I opened the lid up, <laughs> the toppings were all stuck on the one side. The little plastic table that they put in to keep the box there, that was tilted and half broken. And it was disastrous. I just lost it. By then, I was tired. I was stressed out. My back was aching. And I was hungry. And for me, if you want to know the definition of hangry, you can look at me. If I'm tired and hungry, it's a deadly combination. <laughs> I just lost it. I told this guy to take his pizzas and could do with it whatever he likes. I'm not going to pay for it. So he left. Um, eventually, the guest house brought us a few slices of bread, a few slices of ham, a few slices of cheese, one banana, two mangoes, a cluster of grapes, and two yogurts. <laughs> so uh, that was our late Saturday. In the meantime, while we were stuck on the road, we were phoning up and down to get the right size tires. The only place where we could actually find the right size tires was in Cape Town. So luckily our son was here and we bribed, literally, we bribed the store owner to go open the store late on a Saturday afternoon so that our son could buy the two tires. He jumped in his car early the Sunday morning and drove through to where we were. It's about three hours away. And he brought the tires through and some he knew somebody that knew somebody that knew family something something. But they, this guy had an actual tire fitment center in the town that we were in and he sent a breakdown crew out on Sunday morning. So Sunday morning we had two new tires fitted to the back. We couldn't just fit one because it was a different brand and this BMW is a little bit sensitive, whatever, and it's something to do with the insurance on the tire. It must be the same, whatever. So we fitted the two new tires at the back. We're still driving around with the second hand tire. Um, we're going to have it fitted on Tuesday, replaced. The insurance will pay for that. So what an eventful drive down. <laughs> you know, you can only laugh. It, it doesn't help if you get upset about things like this. I can say that now, after Saturday night, I completely lost my shit. Just blew up. Hunger, hunger. <laughs> But yeah, we're here now and we've taken some lovely scenic drives when we were here yesterday actually. We took a long drive. We went to have lunch in um, Hansby. It literally translates to Goose Bay, which is quite, quite a bit out. And we took another scenic route on the way back. So we drove a huge circle. We went through the Franschhoek Mountain Pass. Oh my word, it is so beautiful. And... While I was driving there, I suddenly thought, oh, you know, I was supposed to take photos for you. And I started laughing. And you know why? In 2017, I went to Ireland on a yarn tour. We went to buy yarn in Ireland and to um, sightsee Ireland and whatever. That was in better financial days before COVID came. And in Ireland, I was very meticulous about taking photos everywhere and of everything so that I could share it with my husband when I got back. But afterwards, looking at the photos, many times I would look at this and I would think, where was this? I'm not, I'm not quite sure where I took this. What, where were we? What? And 
then already I realized that for me, I'm just talking for me, I don't have any photographic um, wonderful skills or anything, I don't have a passion for photography, so for me, it, it actually steals the moment from me. I have to concentrate on, oh, there's something nice, let me get the camera out, oh, I've got to focus, now this doesn't look good, okay, let me take the picture, and then I've actually missed the moment. And I think it's because my husband was with me, I'd, I wasn't that set on taking photos, and I could actually take in everything. I enjoyed the moments. Um, I think up to now I've taken three pictures and it's the same three that I had last week. It was one of a sunflower field still up in the northwest province. There was one of cosmos growing next to the road that was still in northwest province. And I took one photo of a quiver tree in the Northern Cape. The quiver tree is native to the Northern Cape. We don't see it in other parts of the country, I think, as far as I know. And those are the only photographs I took. The rest of the time I've actually been in the moment. And it only, I only realized that yesterday. Yesterday I was really in the moment. And I immediately started thinking of my crafting. I, I usually refer to my craft, whether it's crochet or knit, it's a broom for my brain. Because when I start crocheting, um, I'm either concentrating so hard on what I'm doing that I don't have time to think about rubbish that upsets me, or the opposite scenario is that I'm doing something mindless, like Knitting in the round in stocking knit stitch. I mean, you don't concentrate, your hands just go. And then I can actually sit for a while and sort out why am I feeling anxious? What happened that upset me? Who peed me off when? And I can sort through that and get it out of my brain and then I can relax. And that to me is the magic of crochet and knit. I can sort my mind out and then I can be in the moment. I can enjoy the texture of the yarn and I do. I enjoy the color of the yarn. I enjoy watching this thing grow, watching corners form, Watching the stitch pattern come out after a couple of rows where you can really see, oh, this is what it's going to look like. And I forget about other things and I'm truly in the moment enjoying what I'm doing. So when we got here last night, I finally got to start something. Um, I started with the the uh, crochet top that I want to make, it will also be a make and measure one, um, which by now you know, you measure something small, like the circumference of your head, and the pattern evolves around that, so that in the end you have a garment that fits you, with whatever yarn you feel like using. So for this project, I showed it to you previously, it's the cotton scintilla from Colorspun, it's a, it's difficult to see here in the light now, let me turn it a little bit like this, yeah, that's better. It's a purple color. This is a, I think it's 80%, yeah, it's 80% cotton and 20% viscous. But if you watch, if you really look closely, the viscous is a thin visible strand in between the cotton and it actually takes the dye differently. The, the cotton is more purple and the fuscus is a little bit more towards a red violet color. But I don't think I will be able to show it to you on the video. You will just have to take my word for it. And the pattern that I'm using, the stitch pattern, it's only starting to come out. I've only done three rows. One, two, three. Yeah. But it's going to be a very nice dense stitch pattern. So that you will be able to wear this top without a T underneath. That's one of the things about crochet that easily 
um, I don't like it. If, if you only do um, double crochets, there's too many gaps. People can see your underwear. I don't like that. So then I have to wear a cummy. If you want it dense, you have to go for single crochet, which will take a freaking year. And it's so boring. I, I, I just can't fathom the idea of doing single crochet for a, for a full garment. And the other thing that I don't like is single crochet to me doesn't have a rhythm. Uh, it's just me. So um, I'm very happy with what I've got here now. Uh, I think it's going to be lovely. And um, I'm going to push quite a bit on this today because we're going to our son's house and we're going to have a barbecue there or a braai as we call it in South Africa. We don't barbecue. Barbecue is a chip flavor for us. We like to braai. So we're going to braai today and I always sit and crochet in company. I, my hands have to be busy otherwise I start fidgeting with everything else and it doesn't work quite nicely. So yeah. So this is going to be called the Feinboss Tea. Now Feinboss... Fainbos is, is, is the plants that are growing wild in the Western Cape. Uh, you find it on the mountain sides, you find it next to the seaside. There are so many different varieties of fainbos. And um, especially yesterday, uh, driving through the mountains, I was thinking, what am I going to call this thing? I think that's one of the biggest challenges for me. There's never a challenge to design something. For me, the challenge is giving this thing a name. I never know what to call the damn things and um, yesterday while we were driving through I was looking at the fainbos and we are in autumn now in South Africa so the fainbos has gone from this deep deep green there's now lime green in there there's yellow in there and there's the most beautiful copper colors in there and I was just staring at these color changes on the side of the road and I thought my word this the fainbos is so beautiful in autumn and um, I just thought I'll call it the fainbos tea because I was actually um, constructing this thing in my head while we were driving I, I don't know if other people's minds work like this but mine do I can drive and look at scenic things while I'm doing math in my head to figure out how many chains am I going to need um, must the number be divisible by 6 must it be divisible by 12 what is the math going to be like okay I need that but I also need this so 12 won't work 9 won't work oh it will have to be 18 that's the kind of math I have in my head while I'm driving, not speaking, we're just enjoying this absolute scenery and the colors. So this tea is going to be called the Feinbos Tea. Um, you saw during the week I released this pattern, the um, Cedar Forest um, sweater. Uh, and how I got to this name is I love cedarwood oil. Cedarwood essential oil. I really, really love the smell. And I often put it into a diffuser next to me when I'm working. It, it helps me focus. And I said to my husband, what are we going to call this jersey? And he looked at the stitch pattern closely and I looked at it. And at the same time, I said to him, this looks like a plantation. And he said, it looks like a forest. Because the stitch pattern, it looks like little trees that are planted in rows. And that's how the cedar forest came about. So the cedar forest is on um, Ravelry already. There's been quite a few purchases. Thank you for those who have purchased the pattern. You are making my life so much easier. I really, really appreciate the purchase. So yeah, that's my story for the week. Um, by next Saturday, slow Saturday, we will be on the road again. Um, I think we are leaving Cape Town on Friday. And we will have a sleepover somewhere. So I will probably film the video on Friday night probably and share it with you early Saturday morning before we go for the last um, leg. We're not taking the long scenic road back home along the coast. We're going to go through the inland route, the most well-known route in South Africa from Johannesburg down to Cape Town. So that's where we're going to go. We can do that in one day if we really have to. We have done it many times before. But it's a long hour drive. It's about a thousand five hundred k's. 
so we chose to sleep over for the last time and then we will be back home somewhere Saturday afternoon late so by the time you see me next week I will be on the road close to home and hopefully by then I can show you something about the Fainboss tea um, I'm very excited about this one Strangely enough, I can do the same stitch pattern throughout a garment if it's not single crochet. I mean, this was the same stitch pattern right through, but you've got to concentrate. It's still a challenge to do the right thing, not to miss anything, not to skip anything. So it, it keeps my mind occupied. And um, I'm going to be crocheting in the car wherever we go now because it's now mindless for me. I must just follow the stitch pattern sort of. Um, I can see what I have to do. I don't have to consult my notes anymore. So by next slow Saturday, I will be able to show you something of the Fainbos tea. It probably won't be finished yet, but it, it, there will be something to see. I'm looking so forward to this one. I think it's going to be a lovely um, garment for um, autumn if you just make the sleeves a little bit longer. I think if you put three quarter sleeves on this, it's going to make a lovely autumn garment. Maybe I might just do that. I don't know. I'll see how much yarn I have left. I've only ordered 500 grams which is more than enough if I knit for myself but this is crochet and crochet takes more yarn than knitting. So I don't know what the, sleeves, the sleeve length is going to be. I'll see when I get there. I seldom plan something so finely before I start doing it. It grows with me. It changes with me as I go along. My plans change. My ideas change and the end result is what I want. So, yeah, I hope you have a slow Saturday as well. And take time to be in the moment. Don't miss the moment because you're too busy fiddling with your cell phone or your tablet or whatever. Be in the moment. Store the memories of the expression on the face of the person next to you whose company you are enjoying. Store the memories of precious little babies that have just been born. Our grandson, were, he was born on Tuesday. And um, we are just packing in so much memory with him at the moment before we leave on Friday. Store the moment in your mind. Make memories. Memories are not necessarily photos. Sometimes photos afterwards are sort of empty because you can't remember where you've been. Instead, live in the moment, remember the moment, treasure the moment. And if your moment today is just crafting, you are so blessed. That is something huge to be grateful for. I will see you next Saturday.